Hello YouTube and welcome to another video tutorial. Uh, in this one I'm going to be showing like this extremely, well not extremely complex but extreme password protection door system that I created. So uh, let's get started. Um, basically the whole idea behind this is that you have to insert a pattern or a picture um, of whatever you design and then then you just press this button, inserts to make sure it's the correct pattern and uh, correct material used to make the pattern, and then it opens my door. Um, I went a bit extreme on the door because it's no fun uh, being in creative mode if you don't do more than what you normally would. So, yeah, I went a little overboard with my door. But so let's um, insert my pattern to show how this does it. So it goes like that. Go boom. And button. Alright, as you can see, it threw up an MFFS wall, and basically, just this wall is so that someone can't press your button to see what the code is before inputting a code. Um, it's just kind of a little safety precaution there. And as you can see, it detected that hey, it's the right code, right material, and it's opening my door. Little just rendering bug there, sorry about that. Don't know why it likes to do that to me. There we go. And then I have it just sitting for five seconds so I could walk in. And then it shuts it. It is shutting that door, by the way. It just, I get that render bug for some reason. There it goes. And, yep. Boom. And it turns it off. Okay. Uh, the lights I have set up just to kind of just let you know as like, okay, you put in the right password. We're opening the door now. Um, and then this one is going to tell you when uh, someone tried to break in or you put in the wrong code. Um, and it's basically going to stay on until you um, unlock it. Uh, basically, something I've created is if you put in the wrong code, if you don't use the right material, anything like that, what it's going to do is it's going to go into a what I call lockdown mode where basically you can't open the door until you insert a, a certain password into the computer over here that is hidden by this button it says emergency reset boom I have a computer over there as of now you can't put anything into this computer but <coughs> sorry about that uh, but if I were to put in the wrong code then it would you know be like oh that's not the right code well you're trying to break in so we're not going to allow you to open this door anymore so basically you'll come here if I input the wrong code then nothing's going to break even if I put it in all the other places and then just added one it won't it won't take it so this stuff is basically just stuck here uh, sorry about that leg spike and I see that red light has turned on. It's like, oh, you know, someone tried to break in. Kind of just letting you know. So if I come over here, I come to my emergency reset. Press the button. Now, as you can see, it says emergency reset. Enter password. If I enter just some random gibberish, it says wrong. And it'll clear it in just a second. If I put in the correct password, which in this one is tutorial, goes correct please wait and it just counts down I did this for more an aesthetic feel less the need and it resets it and now you can't type anything anymore and the lights turned off and I can input my code again and well that's basically it that is the door itself now let's show the programs basically I did use rednet to make um, this program the way it is um, so basically, what I have here is if I just I have to reboot it because of the way this program works. And just go edit startup. Alright, basically, what happens is it opens the modem on the top and then it sets the signal to zero just in case when it resets that it turns off the light because it is the one activating that light. I just it just makes sure that light gets turned off, and then it just waits for a redstone event. 
I have it sleeping for one second because for some reason I'd have it turn it off and then uh, the event immediately it would register that as a change and totally screw it up. So you have to have it sleep for some amount of time before it is an OS dot pull event. Then once it receives a register signal from that button, it's going to send a signal to the computer I have over yeah over there. Um, I have it underneath here. It's basically just controlling the MFFS projectors to turn them on and off. Because um, I have two. One is basically blocking the key code, and then the other one's the one that pops up in front when you enter in your pattern. Then it sleeps for a little bit, and then it sends a pulse to the white, um, to the white line, moving it forwards. Then it sends a pulse. Then it sends a pulse to through the back that activates the block breakers, which break the blocks, and it gets sent down the piping within the, those, which are redstone con, uh, redstone frame pipes, and then it. Uh, pulses out the left side to the orange. Um, as you can see, it is you see a pulse API that I'm using. Um, this is an API I wrote myself and then put it into the default file. So on any computer, I automatically I put into a world. It's automatically going to have this API on it. I did it so sending uh, pulses via bundle cables and regular wiring. Um, is a lot easier and there's less typing saves up room in your code so it's just something I did um, and then I have it sleep for just like 10 seconds and then that's just to make sure that it gets all the way down here in time then it checks to make sure this over here is true so basically what happens is when the block breakers break it, it sends it down uh, redstone conductive pipes into this item detector as you can see in the item detector, it's allowed only marble, so I can't input anything else but marble. Marble is the only thing allowed in here. Um, and basically, whenever one of the marble blocks passes through it, it sends out a redstone signal. So it sends a redstone signal, which goes to the counter. The counter basically counts how many pulses it gets. So I have it counting up to nine, because nine is the pulse uh, the amount of blocks I have. Once it reaches nine pulses, it sends a signal out this way to the computer. If someone doesn't put enough blocks in the right places, or someone doesn't put the right blocks in any anywhere, it autom it's not going to emit a redstone signal, so this is going to go, oh, some, so, something's not right about this code, we're going to lock it down after resetting this counter, just in case they put in the right code, but wrong blocks are um, or they put in the right code, well, part of the right code with the same blocks, that kind of stuff. It resets that just to be sure, and it goes into lockdown mode. And so when it is correct, though, it sends a signal to my computer I have over here controlling all my frame motors for my doors, which I'll go show you that in a second. It sends a signal there. And red net signal and then pulses out the bottom to reset the counter and sleeps for like 30 seconds so you can't like immediately put in your code again uh, not that you would need to just that it's kind of a safe just kind of like so you don't screw something up or do something weird um, if the th if it's not true then it's going to pulse out the bottom to make sure it's reset then it's going to send a signal to the computer where I have to enter a password and when I do that When it, <laughs> when it does that, it runs the reset program on that computer over there. It sends a signal at the left. It sets the bundle cable over there to 8, which is the wire connected to the red lamp. And basically, <clears throat> it stays like that because of the way that bundle cables and that kind of stuff is set up. It's going to continue to be that until I tell it otherwise to turn it off. Or it's unloaded, the chunks are unloaded and reloaded. And then I have it run the lockdown program. Uh, basically, my lockdown program is extremely simple. It is basically going to shell dot run a couple programs for me. So, right here, I just have it renaming the startup program. So that program I was just at is going to rename that as default, just some name away from startup. 
then I have a program I named unlock and it's going to create that as the startup program and then run the startup program so basically this makes it so this program is no longer startup so this is the program that is now in effect and it's going to continue to stay in effect even if the chunks get unloaded or you log out the server gets shut down something like that and then when it comes back up this is going to be the startup program so when this computer loads again it's going to run this while in lockdown mode basically it's going to run this unlock program and that is just basically telling it to wait for a signal from my password computer so if I edit unlock and if I could spell unlock unlock Basically, I just tell it to open the modem. It makes sure that that cable that it's sending a uh, signal out the left side of the bundle cable to eight, and then it's just going to wait for a message from that computer. It's going to print the message and then run the message, which in this case is going to be my I believe reset is what I have. So edit reset. Basically, it's going to take the unlock and name it unlock again. And then name what I whatever name I put is de the default name is going to put it back as the startup and run it. So it goes back to running the correct program so you can open the door. And then basically this is the same thing over here. I have it so if I control reboot, control R, control T, then I edit startup. It basically is just waiting for a message from that saying that. Uh, something went wrong uh, I need you to run a certain program in this case reset and edit reset is basically like the reset or lockdown I have over there I have it as just shell dot run these and then uh, run the startup program so pretty simple and if I exit and then I edit lockdown it's just a simple um, it opens the back, it runs clear on the screen, and then does an emergency reset. It writes and it prints emergency reset, does term.write, enter password. Uh, the difference between print and term.write is this goes to the next line afterwards, but term.write does not. It stays at the line so you print afterwards. So that's basically the only difference between these two. And um, then I said pass equals this. I have this so that way it prints as the list star thingy so no one else can see the password you're typing in and if password equals tutorial then I have it print correct sleep for a little bit please wait and then it just counts down like I uh, like it did so and then it says reset successful sleeps for a couple seconds and then sends a signal to um, then sends a signal over to my computer resetting it turning off um, putting it out of lockdown mode and back into its original um, where you can enter your password and then it clears the screen and does unlocked which basically resets everything that reset did otherwise it just prints wrong and sleeps for a little bit and clears so save exit let's reboot this I forgot to reboot my other computer do, do, do. reboot All right. now this um, basically I have uh, motors here to get this second door motors here to get uh, one of the halves of the third door I have motors here that take it so it's not right up against the wall and it pulls it out so that these motors can then move it back, uh, move it out of place and then back and it moves it back and then have these motors move in the second half, uh, the other half of the third door. Um, I did this whole door system, just kind of something fun. But, you know, I thought if someone is building something that has this kind of complex code, you'll probably have a complex door. So if I control um, T, I don't have to reboot this one. If I edit open. Um, the startup program is basically the same as like the startup program for my password computer. It just sets it so it's waiting for a rednet signal from some other computer.
basically it sends the output out the back true which basically is just um, a wireless uh, transmitter and it's sending a signal to two lamps so that um, it turns them on so you know when the door is opening and closing when it's you know about to run open and done running open then it pulses white using that uh, API route which then pulls the first door away then moves the door moves the second door moves the I had to use I couldn't use my API for this because in order to get the two halves of the door to leave and close at the same time I had to put their added numerical values so I couldn't just do send it here um, I couldn't just pulse one color pulse the other color at the same time I couldn't do that so I had to just do the adding of the colors um, colors numerical values which isn't bad but that's just something because I wanted the look of the two doors going at the same time and then it closes the second door closes the third door sets back into place and then turns off the lamp uh, that way you know okay it's no longer closing um I mainly did that um for the first door so you know okay I put in the right code um but mainly for my second door because if I portable hole my way in here you can see this lamp another computer which basically just the program is when it receives a redstone signal from this button it's going to send a redhead signal to the computer below um, telling it to open the door uh, but basically the whole reason I put the lamp in the first place is because this way you can tell when the doors are opening and uh, about to be closed because as you can see you can't see anything until these doors actually move so this way if you're in here you can open and you know okay the button worked it's going and see everything's open um, and then the other reason is so when you come from out there in here you know when the door is actually all the way closed so you see it's still closing at the moment but then once that light turns off you're like okay the door is finally all the way closed and I can yeah you know, it's all the way closed so I don't have to worry that kind of stuff so yeah that was basically um, the whole door system uh, nothing too complex um, the programming wasn't too hard to do uh, the wiring not too hard either. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah. Uh, the ender chest basically is the whole reason I put ender chest is because I have an ender chest within my room so that I can get whatever I put in there back. So if I put in the marble, I can go, okay, and grab the marble out, or I can have it in my sorting system. If I had a sorting system, it wasn't in test world. Um, have it in a sorting system, and it would just. Uh, put it back within wherever I have marble stored or I could have a pouch dedicated to having the material in order to get into my house so something like that uh, however you wanted to do it um, I, there's a lot you can improve on with this uh, specific thing I mean you could make the walls out of warded stone you could do uh, so much more with this you can make it all MFFS you know whatever you want um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, learned something and got any got good ideas from this or whatever. Um, comments are much appreciated. If you found something in my code that you think I could improve on, um, I am relatively new to programming. I mean, I've basically taught myself, and I've only been kind of experimenting with this for the past few months. So I mean, I'm not an expert at this for any me at any means so if you see anywhere I can improve because you know you've worked with programming on Lua before I'd love it in the comments uh, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed likes and subscribes are much appreciated I uh, hope you enjoy this video and have a good day